Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Glory. God is on the move. He's on the groove. <clears throat> Things are happening rapidly, quickly, intently. But you know, we can easily miss it. One of the things the enemy loves to do is distract us. Amen? He distracts us again, and you'll hear this probably over and over, with emotion. Stinky emotion. He likes to put us in the woe is me syndrome. Woozy me. What about me? We need to turn things back over to what about him? Amen. I've heard some disturbing news about what's happening to children in our country. I knew it happened in other countries, but I never knew it would happen here, where they're actually mutilating young little girls. And there is no legislation against it. The judges are not coming against it. It's a Muslim thing, I believe. And it's pretty sick. It's like, what right does anyone have to do that to another human being? But it's happening in this country. And, and it just blew me away. That's when I get angry. That's when people like that who do those things, who approve those things, ought to be shot. And the only thing that we can do is intercede in warfare and stop this disgusting thing that's happening to these children. As we warfare in the area of abortion, it's the same thing as in the Old Testament when the Lord told the Israelites and they were passing their children through fire. It's the same thing as abortion. Sacrificing their own children thinking that they were going to gain favor of God. The problem was it was called Baal. See, there's so much stuff going on today where people don't realize that there's a worship of Jezebel, there's a worship of Baal, there's a worship of Baphomet, there's a worship of the harlot. There's much worship, there's satanic worship where people don't even know that they're actually doing it. People are still reading their horoscopes, going to witch doctors, still going to mediums and spiritists, and they call themselves Christians, but they're too stinking lazy to pick up a Bible and find out what God is saying. They go to demonic forces and don't even realize that they're that ignorant. And God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And one of the things that's happening right now, there's so much influence, there is so much fake news, there's so much lying. You know, one of the things the enemy wants to do is put people under mind control. And he does that by feeding them false information. He feeds them deceptive things. He feeds them. And many people are eating these things and picking up what we call worldly appetites or ungodly appetites. In 1 John chapter 2, Addiction is an appetite. How many know lust is an appetite? <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter, or First John chapter two, sorry. In verse fifteen. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay, we can all go home now. 
Do not love the world or the things in the world. What is he saying? Do not love the appetites of the world. Then he, begins, he gives you categories of the appetites. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh is an appetite. The lust of the eyes is an appetite. And the pride of life is an appetite. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. And who is the Father of the world? Satan. So again, he's impressing, influencing his appetites on, man, on God's people. You know, one of the things the Lord is always doing, he wants, he checks us out, he tests us. But again, you've heard me say this before, that the greatest desire of a father is that his children see what he sees. How about the greatest desire of a father is that his children have the same appetite he does? And so in this, one of the things the Lord does is he checks us out. He tests us. And, and in his testing, he wants to know what we're willing to do to show him. To show him. And, and in this showing, it's not about works of showing him. It's about obedience of showing him. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you going to keep him as your first love? Are you going to put him first for everything? Not only him first for everything, but are you going to love his presence more than the presence of the world? Amen? Are you going to trust him before you trust your job? Are you going to put him before your job? Are you going to put him before money? Are you going to put him before anything before your family? Are you going to put him number one? He will always check us out and test us in those areas. And then he wants to know whether you're going to submit to his authorities that he has placed. Because if you can't submit to his authorities, he, you're not going to submit to him. Now, people might think, well, man, I, I don't need to do that. I, I'll submit to God, but I ain't submitting to that person or whatever when God's placed him in authority. But then God says, and you ain't submitting to me because I'm the one who placed them there. Don't love the worldly appetites. It's called ungodly appetites. Amen? Let's go a little further. Verse 17. And the world is what? Passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So what is he telling you? If you eat the worldly appetites, you cannot do the will of God. It's impossible. Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have stayed with us. They would have continued with us. But they went out because they began to eat worldly appetites. And they became manifested that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing. Hello, everyone say anointing. Listen. Again, you all hear a lot of these things because the area of God's presence, power, and truth is the ultimate goal to maintain and live in and have our being in the arena, in the anointing. Because without the anointing, we won't make it. We won't make it. People can memorize the Bible and they can't make it. Even the devil knows the Bible, and he ain't going to make it. Amen? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't know the word. But if it's not backed by the anointing, it's nothing but seed. There's no sword. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Everyone say, I know all things in the anointing. See, when you think you know all things without the anointing, it's called pride. Hallelujah. Matthew 4. It 
See, God wants to get us from natural to supernatural. But if we continue to eat worldly and ungodly things that the enemy promotes, we will not walk in the supernatural. You will not overcome temptations. They will overcome you. In Matthew chapter 4, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led up by the what? Okay, so was he in the anointing? Yes. To be tempted by the devil. Listen, you don't even realize that sometimes that the Lord is leading you to be tempted by the devil. Does everybody get it? He sees it coming, he knows, but he's not stopping it or preventing it. He's allowing it to happen. Why? Because he's going to test you. That's why we all go, that's why the word says, count it all joy when you go through what? Trials and tribulations. Because everyone's going to go through it. There's a process of growth. There's a process of shedding the old and putting on the new. That process is continuous. And it says here now, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry. So Jesus ate nothing or drank nothing 40 days and 40 nights. Why? He was fasted from the world. Does nobody understand it? He would not eat any appetite associated with the world. He was being fed by the Spirit of God. That was his appetite. Because he had to fulfill a position to overcome. Does everybody get this? That's why some people don't overcome the enemy. Because they're still partaking in worldly appetite. Hallelujah. Now when the tempter, everyone say tempter had come to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Why? The devil knew he was hungry. Amen? He knew he was hungry. Why? Because the demonic forces know what we think. And Jesus answered him and said, it is written. I'm not going to say the devil knew what Jesus thought because the devil had nothing in him. But he's got an old man in us. He's got his old offspring still in us called flesh. It is written. It is written. Not eaten. It is written. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone, the appetite of the world. But every word that what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took off. No. <laughs> then the devil tempted something somewhere else. And, you know, he, he doesn't stop. You know, just because he flees one time doesn't mean he doesn't turn around and come back another way. He's a heathen shapeshifter. Again, Jesus was never led by the flesh. He was led by the spirit. Even at a young age, if you remember, his parents lost him. <laughs> and when they found him, they said, where you been, man? He said, I've been about my father's business. Snap. I think he was about 12 years old or something. <laughs> man cannot live by worldly appetites. You know, that's one of the things you should always have in your mind. Am I about my father's business? Am I about my father? Especially when frustration comes. Hold on a second. Frustration? I labor unto the Lord. I'm about my father's business. See, not everything is going to go the way you expect them to go. But it doesn't mean it's going to turn out. Amen? And so there's an area where we have to refocus and reset ourselves. When a distraction does come, when an emotion tries to overtake us. But it shouldn't overtake us. Because the anointing destroys everything. 
But the enemy knows how to play us. And he's a very good manipulator and player. Romans 8. Does he know your weaknesses? Yes. As a matter of fact, he's the one that created them. <laughs> so he knows them. Verse 12, Romans 8, 12, let's read it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. So if you live according to the flesh, are you eating worldly appetites? Yes. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we what? Suffer with him. In other words, you will be persecuted. Most of the time you're persecuted by your own self. You can't cast out self. Hallelujah. <laughs> For if we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Now I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Revealed in us. Hallelujah. Deeds of the body. Deeds of the body are called worldly appetites. Does everybody see that? Let's go a little further. Actually, I don't want to go a little further. In verse 13, if you'll go back there for a minute, if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the what? Deeds of the body, you will live. Those mean worldly appetites. Deeds of the body are worldly appetites. Things people crave, desire, or lust for. Unfortunately, these things are displeased God, or they're not in this timing. In First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four and verse one. Did you ever eat too much? Don't raise your hand. And you felt like, I shouldn't eat that. I mean, you just feel like busted. Then you can't wait for it to go away. And most of the time, people eat too much because there was something that tasted so good. <laughs> not really seeing it through. The, in other words, that taste, that appetite overtook the reality of the end result. Hallelujah. That's what happens in the spirit. Verse 1, let's speak it. Now the spirit, what? Expressly says that in the last times or latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. These are promoters of worldly appetites. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from what? Foods, God's foods, <laughs> which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. In other words, many will be enticed, tempted, and deceived to partake of worldly appetites. We see it happening now. Unfortunately, it's happening in our schools. It's happening in our government. It's happening in the judicial system. All of these people that have been partaking of worldly appetites are now coming against God. 
or they have a form of godliness but are non-submissive to the will of God. And Proverbs 23 Proverbs 23. Everybody okay? You know, you can usually tell what comes out of somebody's mouth or what they've been eating. Especially if they ate a lot of garlic. Those are not, <laughs> those are not the flames of the Spirit. <laughs> Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Let's speak it. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, someone in authority, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. What kind of appetite? Worldly or ungodly? Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. We call that junk food. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For the riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like a eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a what? A miser, which is a hoarder, <laughs> who's a taker, not a giver. They are usually covetousness. They're greedy. There are compromisers. Do not eat of their what? Delicacies. Hmm. Nor desire his delicacies. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Why? Because what people are eating spiritually is affecting their thought patterns. Eat and drink, he says you do, but his heart is not what? With you, the morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Again, we have a saying, what you speak is what you eat. Amen? It's not what comes into a man that defiles him, it's what comes out of his mouth. But of course, how does that defilement get in? Through the ear gates, eye gates, thought gates. Go to 2 Timothy 3. That's why the, Lord, uh, the world, the ruler of this world, Satan's kingdom, there's a spirit called pharmakia. That's where the word pharmacy came from. They call it, they want to remove your depression with an antidepressant pill. They want to remove all of these things with pills, but it's all backed up and attached to witchcraft. And people don't realize that because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And these mental pills that people get put on, if they would read, really understand the side effects, one of the major top sayings of uh, the side effects is suicide. So the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then these people get hooked on these things. And many of them commit suicide. Many of them die. Or they go to street drugs and begin to use them. Because they can't get from the pharmacy anymore. But again, that's how an enemy promotes an ungodly or worldly appetite. Sometimes it's the innocent thing but it can turn into a worse thing amen second timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 but know this that in the last days perilous times will come and men will be lovers of themselves why are they lovers of themselves they're certainly not eating godly food lovers of money boasters Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, 
haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because associations bring impartations, don't you? Don't they? Listen, you hang around with an individual that long, you're going to be, begin to partake of their same delicacies. In fact, they will begin to offer them to you. If you hang around with that person long enough, you will not be able to overcome that. I've heard of many people trying to go out and rescue people. Of course, God didn't send them, and they ended up staying right where they were. Like crack houses, bars, and everything else. Well, God sent me. No, he didn't. He doesn't send you until we're equipped. Amen? People of the worldly appetites. That's what this is all about. Go to Genesis 3. Isn't this how this originated? Genesis 3, verse 1. It says, now the serpent, who is the chief chef of worldly and ungodly appetites, he's got every recipe out there, man. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, his God indeed said, you shall not what? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Remember, the Lord warned them multiple times, be careful what you intake, what you partake of, what you agree with. And of course, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree of the, of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. Now she knew it, but she didn't depart with the serpent. She didn't take her authority and say, be away, go. She tried to prove God, and she ended up falling. See, you don't have to prove God. God will prove himself through you. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Of course, then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So she, he called God a liar and her a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, she was already like God. In fact, she couldn't get any closer than what she already was. <laughs> so when the woman saw, because of that convincing, that provoking, that consistency of the enemy that comes, Enticing, 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 partake, partake, partake. Once you begin to reason and consider, you begin to see differently. Does everybody get that? Once you consider, once you begin to reason or even consider, you begin to see differently. Why? Because your eyes are now taken off of the Lord. This is how the enemy operates. He wants to get your eyes off the Lord. He comes, he comes, he comes. He tells you, he begins to promote you. Oh, you're better than this. Oh, you're better than others. You know this, you know that. You don't need to do this. You don't need to. The enemy begins to promote you. Oh, God, God's going to make you really do this. You know what? He, God has already pre-approved us already. This is where people mislead by the voice. God is not a promoter of pride. He's a promoter of humility. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Now, you know that, so when a woman saw, because her eyesight changed, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and it was a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, but they were actually both closed. 
Why? Because they're open to the physical and shut to the spiritual. Now the serpent and God became blinded to them. And they knew that they were naked because their eyes were on themselves. And they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves coverings. And they heard because they could no longer see. Do you understand that worldly and ungodly appetites will blind you? Worldly and ungodly music will blind you. And they heard the sound of the Lord because they couldn't see. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife did what? They hid themselves. They began to run from God now. From the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where you be, man? Like he didn't know. And so he said, I heard your voice in the garden because I couldn't see you. It kind of freaked me out. So I booked and I hid myself because I was very ashamed. I had guilt and condemnation. Didn't know what they understood. But something changed in Adam and in Eve because of what they partook in. And he said, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And the Lord's famous saying said, who told you that? Did you partake? Did you change the appetite to that special diet plan I put you on? <laughs> that beautiful, perfect diet plan that God had them on, they partake of the wrong delicacies. They begin to eat junk food processed by the serpent seed in Satan's ungodly manufacturing kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. From the beginning, the Lord warned about appetite, of ungodly appetite and worldly appetites. The purpose was to keep us disconnected if we continue to partake. Put us in a stupor. Dull our state of being. And just waiting to get slaughtered. Mark 7. Hallelujah. Worldly appetites. Mark 7 and verse 17. It says, when Jesus had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And Jesus said to him, are you thus still without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart, but his what? Stomachs. And is eliminated and thus purifying all foods. He said, what comes out of a man, that's what defiles a man. From whom within, out of the heart of man proceed what? Evil thoughts. Adulteresses. Adulterers. Fornication. Murders. Thieves. Covetousness. Wickedness. Deceit. Lewdness. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Pride and foolishness. This is what defiles a man. All these evil things come out from within and defile a man. Well, how did they get in there? They had to agree with something. They had to come through a gate. They had to listen to something. They had to see something. They had to touch something. Somehow, whatever. This is what defiles a man. It was exposed in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. All contaminants. That defile a person because of agreement. Everyone say agreement. In James 4. James chapter 4. Oh, happy day.
You know, it's amazing how the news no longer is news, it's just a cues. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, it just blows me away when you turn on, you're trying to find out what's really happening and nobody can tell you really what's happening. They just accuse one another. This is, to them, it's a political fight on the news, but to you and I, it's a fight against evil and righteous. But until they see that, they will continue to eat the delicacies and maintain an appetite of worldliness with jealousy, rage, and vengeance. Not that I don't like vengeance myself. I love vengeance on evil. Praise God. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires or your delicacies for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. Why? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your appetites. Pleasures. Worldly pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. So if you're eating of the worldly appetite, delicacies, you'll become an enemy of God. Not that he's your enemy, you're his. Amen? Verse 5. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Therefore, <clears throat> submit to God, submit to God, his authority, his word, his recipes, and then you'll be able to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But if you're not partaking of godly recipes, appetites, and delicacies, you will not. That's not submission, and the enemy knows. Because, see, he knows when there's submission. Because if you submit to authority, you gain authority. But we don't submit to authority, you lose authority, and the enemy knows that. And the more that you don't submit to authority, the more the enemy will show up with all kinds of desserts, delicacies to get you to partake. And then next thing you know, you become more blinded, you become more deaf, your heart becomes more hardened, you become a fighter for your life instead of a giver of your life. Friendship with the world is a person of worldly appetite, ungodly and perverse. It's all under the influence of Jezebel, Baal, Prince of Power of Air, Doctrines of Demons. Well, the three things that they lack is purity, humility, and righteousness. That will be the lack. That will be the fruit of what they're lacking. Purity, humility, and righteousness. Jeremiah 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 7. Is everybody all right? How are you getting this? Are you, how many of y'all know that God's preparing us? Because there's a lot of stuff coming. How many of you know fear is an ungodly appetite? Fear. People freak out when they're fearful, aren't they? Verse 21. And I try to avoid those squirrels in the street when I'm driving, you know? They always come, yeah, don't do it. I always talk to them. Don't do it. Because I'm not driving nowhere else. You're going to be underneath the wheel. <laughs> you know? Don't do it. Thank God 99% of them will avoid me hitting them. <laughs> but 
but I hate that, you know? Same thing with a cat or a dog, or especially when kids are in the corner there, you, but you gotta be really careful. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of, you, you, you're, you're prepared so you don't freak out, because you don't want to avoid a squirrel and hit the neighbor. Jeremiah 7, verse 21. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and do what? Eat meat. Eat godly protein. Spiritual food. Amen? <laughs> it's called spiritual protein. That's why he says eat meat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 22, for I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. He didn't tell them about that. But this is what I commanded them, saying, obey my voice. And I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels of the dictates of their evil hearts and went backwards and not forward. Why? Because they were not eating what God told them to eat. Does everybody get this? Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent to you all my servants to prophets daily, rising up early and sending them. Yet they did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffen their necks, and they did worse than their fathers. Therefore you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not obey you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall say to them, This is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. How many of y'all know? See, so many times people don't re understand that receiving correction is godly appetite. Does everybody grab hold of this? Receiving God's correction and chastening is godly appetite. He's trying to feed you. It's almost like force feed. Why? Because correction brings protection. What does he say here? He says, truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Does everybody get that? Truth is perished and been cut off from their mouth. Again, he uses eat meat as a spiritual protein. And of course, it's the word of God, backed by the anointing. Amen? Hebrews 5. What are you partaking in? What are you eating? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you agreeing And what are you fearing? What are you promoting? Hebrew 5, verse 12. Training for reigning. Let's speak it. Verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be what? teachers. You need someone to teach you again to what? The first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a, a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both what is good and what is evil. Living off of milk as an adult will stunt your growth. You will not grow spiritually. You will actually go backwards. Some people don't want meat. They just want to stay milky. And they want to stay in that condition, in a baby condition. Listen, we're to approach the Lord as children like babes. And that it's where it's babes, it's all trusting. Amen? But we're not to desire milk. We're to desire meat, protein, 
eternal protein. Second Corinthians six. Second Corinthians six. In verse 11, not like we haven't heard this before. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own appetites. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not what? Be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? Because you'll partake in their delicacies. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of God, uh, uh, of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, they shall be my people. If they do what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, or don't eat what is unclean, or agree with what's unclean. Then I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In other words, cleanse ourselves from bad appetites, bad diet. Restricted by worldly and ungodly appetites. I'm going to close at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Don't let the enemy stunt your growth. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. You know, think about this physically, in the physical arena. If people would eat a better diet, would they be healthier? Amen. Would they live longer? Yeah. Same thing spiritually. They'll be healthier, and they'll live longer. Why? Because their spirit man will be stronger. The Lord says he'll renew our youth. Every one of us wants to be renewed, amen? But he says he renews us in his presence. So for eating youthful food, which is his word, partaking in a stay, stay away from aging food, hello, you'll maintain us an, 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 an area of youth. But of course, if you live on Twinkies, you know what's going to happen. Verse 3, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, why? Because the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and his doctrine is good food. Amen? And to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud, knowing nothing, is obsessed with the disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, re reviling, and evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdraw yourself. For godliness with content is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be what? Content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. That's a wrong appetite. Amen for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness. Why? Because they've put money before God. 
and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith and love and patience and gentleness, and fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. <clears throat> I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appears, which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only pontinate King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen and amen. Again, become more sensitive and discerning to the things that you are partaking with, especially during these holiday seasons, when there's all kinds of recipes out there. Amen? And there's a lot of ungodly ones. You got to be careful behind every jingle bell. There's another bell. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word, and we are honored and blessed. Let this word that has been imparted in the seed be protected by the blood of Jesus. And let the spirit of the living God continue to grant us appetite for home that we have godly appetites and that you release more and more godly recipes to us called revelation so that we maintain the restraints in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed.